Hello, my name is Dr. Catherine Zolman. I'm Medical Director at Penny Bron UK. I'm also an NHS GP. And at Penny Bron, we support people who are affected by cancer to build their own resilience um, using a range of different self-management and support techniques so that they can live well. And although we physically had to shut the doors of our national centre in Bristol during this period of COVID isolation, we're continuing to offer as many of our services as we can over the telephone, through our website or through our online support groups. And we're aware through doing this just how much anxiety there is at the moment due to the COVID crisis. And it's particularly so in the cancer community. And this is very understandable. So many things have changed. Many people are receiving letters, which are called the shielding letters, telling them that they need to be completely isolated and look after themselves as they're very vulnerable. And this anxiety is in some ways very justified, but it's also maybe more contagious even than the virus itself. Social distancing doesn't protect you from the anxiety that can sometimes be fueled by everything that's going on around us. So I want to hopefully bust a few myths and help people find ways of managing that anxiety in ways which keep them safe, but also help support their resilience and don't undermine it. So first of all, I do want to remind people that although COVID-19 can sometimes be serious and even life-threatening illness, for the vast majority of people, even those in the vulnerable groups, this is an illness that people can recover from and most will recover from within a matter of weeks. So I think that's often a fact that's, that kind of gets forgotten or maybe distorted when we all think of it as, as if I catch it, that's a, that, that's that's it, that's a really, really serious illness. Yes, it can be, but it can also be a mild and self-limiting illness. And I don't know if people saw a wonderful interview with George Alagaya, a BBC News presenter, who himself is living with advanced stage four colon cancer and was in the middle of chemotherapy when he actually contracted the COVID-19 illness. And he describes how, you know, at the time he caught it, there was obviously a lot of anxiety, but he thought, well, if I can live with cancer, I can live with COVID. And in fact, for him, it was a relatively minor illness. And he did come out of it the other side, um, fully recovered and without any, any problems. And in fact, um, the idea that a lot of cancer pe patients and people who've had cancer treatment are worried about that their immune system may not be able to cope if they get the virus is very understandable, but actually the evidence is quite mixed around this. And in fact, some ways it may be more dangerous to have an overactive immune system than an underactive immune system. And many people who have completed their cancer treatment, even though they may have gone through a period where their immune system was suppressed or compromised for a little while, most people who've completed their cancer treatment will now have an immune system that is back to normal and able to function um, in a, in, a, in a completely normal way. So there are a couple of myths. COVID-19 isn't always a fatal or severe illness. And many people who've undergone cancer treatment have robust immune systems that will have recovered fully. And also one of the important things is that although many people think that there's nothing we can do uh, apart from avoid a virus to, to help us deal well with it, Actually, there's a lot of evidence, not yet for COVID-19, but for many other viral illnesses, including coronavirus illnesses, that actually we can support our own immune response to it um, and our resistance and resilience to it in a number of different ways. Obviously, things like getting enough sleep, getting enough rest, being physically active in a way which supports our health eating in a way which supports our health and not only our health but the health of our of those millions of bacteria that live in our guts our microbiome which are is so important for us developing and maintaining healthy immune responses those are all really important things that we can do in a preventative way to make sure that if we do come in contact with the virus our immune systems are in as good shape as possible now as well as those things it's also really important to keep our stress levels as well managed as we can. Now, at this time, 
almost everybody I meet, almost everybody I know is feeling more stressed than usual. And this is, this is completely normal. But recognising our stress and being able to at least give ourselves temporary relief from that and using a range of relaxation techniques, and there are many out there, tools and techniques that are proven to help reduce people's response to a stressful situation and reduce the physical effect it has on our body, those can be really important. And I would like to put a big shout out here for breathing. Breathing techniques are free, they're available to, for us to do any time of day or night, and they are incredibly powerful ways of helping to regulate our stress response and help shift it towards a more helpful relaxation response. So those are, those are many things that we can do to boost our resilience. And let's not also forget that things we enjoy in life and things that feel nourishing for us as people and nourishing for us in our spirit, that's another really powerful way of supporting our immune resilience and our immune um, capability. Um, and again, many research studies have shown how, how that can make an important um, difference to how, how resistant we are to getting ill. From, from viruses, but from a number of other things. So myth number three that I want to bust is there's nothing we can do about this except for sit and wait and hope the virus doesn't come in through the door. There are plenty of things that we can do that generally don't have any negative side effects. All of these things that I've talked about, if we get them right, should increase our health and well-being as well as making us more able to resist and respond well if we do actually catch the virus. Another thing that I'd like to really highlight is that although many people who've had cancer will be feeling more vulnerable in the face of this COVID crisis, I would like to remind you all that if you have been affected by cancer, you are also likely to have some strengths and some attributes and some skills that actually may put you at an advantage and may make you more resilient in some ways if you do get the COVID-19 um, illness. And many people will have actually been quite, had already had an experience of having to face uncertainty, face the possibility of a life limiting illness, and will have had to actually um, manage that, that situation, which to other people may feel, how would I ever get through that? And again, I re remain reminding people that if you have been able to live with a cancer diagnosis and live through those terrifying few weeks where you're still waiting for tests and finding out what's going on and finding out what the situation is and being given a prognosis, all of those things will stand you in extremely good stead in this troubling time when for many people this is the first time that they are actually even thinking about any of those things. Um, I also think that in some ways, although many people are finding that receiving those letters saying, you know, you are in a vulnerable group, a particularly vulnerable group, you need to shield. Many people find that receiving that letter can bring back those, that sense of anxiety, that sense of I'm not well and therefore I need to really look after myself. Actually, for some people, they can, they can see these letters as a wonderful way of being given permission to really look after themselves in the way that they want to. And I think it's about getting that balance right. Um, I think different people with different cancers and different treatment regimes will be differently vulnerable. And I think the trouble is that these letters have come out and it's just one letter that have been sent to all the different people in that group, even though people's individual vulnerability may be, may be very different from one another. So I would encourage you, if you are feeling restricted or feeling that that social isolation and that shielding letter and instructions are stopping you doing some of the things that normally keep you resilient, like maybe going outside and getting fresh air, I would really encourage you to talk to your oncology teams and find out just how, how important it is for you to be 100% with those with those rules. Most people can find a way of getting outside in places where they're not going to come into contact with other people or at times when things are relatively quiet, where they can keep a, a reasonable distance, so a distance of three metres or more from the next person, um, and where they can actually carry on enjoying some of the things that they've enjoyed. Um, and most people, for most people, 
there are safe ways of doing that. So I would really encourage you to speak to your oncology teams and find out exactly what this means for you if you are feeling restricted by it. Now, other people are finding that actually, in some ways, it's, it's kind of reassuring and they feel safer um, absolutely adhering to this and staying indoors. So if that's you, that's absolutely fine. Um, and I recognise that the government is really trying to err on the side of caution with all of these and, and give simple advice that is across the board. And that makes an awful lot of sense. So I absolutely um, want to encourage you to, to follow and all the guidance and to do everything that's in your power to stop you getting or passing on the virus. That's obviously really important. Um, but I also want you to have confidence in your own body's ability to be resilient and in your ability to give yourself the, the best conditions that you can um, so that your body can operate and can be resilient. Because many people affected by cancer have already learnt ways of supporting themselves through times of anxiety, through times of ill health, and times when, when their resilience has been challenged. So I really encourage you to play to those strengths, to remember that as a community, although in some ways you have been labelled vulnerable, actually maybe you do have some hidden strengths, and maybe not so hidden, actually some really important strengths and skills that can really come into play now and that can really be of benefit. So I hope that's been helpful. Please do, as I say, get in touch with us at Penny Brown. We're always really keen to find out how we can support you, how we can help you more. Um, and I will be doing some more recordings to help if, with, with symptoms, if people are getting troublesome symptoms related to the COVID illness. There are many integrative approaches that can help. So watch this space. And in the meantime, keep safe and keep well.